Chapter 576, Come, Let's Harm Each Other By the mountains, by the sea, there was. This had become Hai Gongzi's biggest headache. If it were an ordinary person from normal times, they would start singing along. But Hai Gongzi had never heard of it before. Lu Xu was rather terrible as well. Although he could bring Hai Gongzi out on his own initiative, for some reason he did not allow Hai Gongzi to go back into the sword. This was very awkward. Hai Gongzi probably knew this as well. Thus, every day when Lu Xu practiced his sword, he would humiliate Lu Xu and make Lu Xu feel very uncomfortable. Hai Gongzi could not find an answer. He felt that he could not let it end just like this. Tomorrow, he would harshly criticize Lu Xu. This way, he would be able to remove the hate he harbored. The next day before dawn, Hai Gongzi arrived as planned. While Lu Xu was practicing, he heard Hai Gongzi lightly say, Your progress is very fast, but you have probably only reached 10% of my strength. Your aptitude may be very good for a human, but the human race as a whole is a sorry bunch. Lu Xu did not know whether to laugh or to cry. I've heard. Afterwards, he continued practicing. In the end, he did not receive any distress points from Hai Gongzi even after waiting for a long time. Hmm. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. Hai Gongzi, did your OCD get cured overnight? Hai Gongzi did not care about him. He continued speaking, did you realize that your actions are too stiff? You are too clumsy, too clumsy. Um. Lu Xu felt that something was not right. It didn't make sense. How did his OCD get cured overnight? That was not scientifically possible. It couldn't be that Hai Gongzi was faking his OCD yesterday. His distress points were not fake either. As Lu Xu was pondering, Hai Gongzi laughed loudly and returned to the Cheng Ying sword with a pleased expression on his face. Lu Xu was suddenly dumbfounded. Did Hai Gongzi listen in on his plans? But that made no sense. Lu Xu was lost in thought. Hai Gongzi could humiliate him, but he could not humiliate Hai Gongzi. Lu Xu could not take this. That night, Lu Xiaoyu sent a message to Lu Xu informing him of her safety. Lu Xu was somewhat curious. He did not know why Lu Xiaoyu had been earning much fewer distress points than before. Beating around the bush did not give him any clues. On the other hand, Lu Xiaoyu was trying to figure out why Lu Xu had always asked what she was doing soon after anything happened. Of course, Lu Xu could not say anything. He could not let Lu Xiaoyu know that he was earning distress points through her. In reality, Lu Xiaoyu was doing well in the training. From the start when she was at odds with her classmates, to now when she had established trust, Lu Xiaoyu had been accepted to this organization. During actual combat, the commanding officers often used the boys to make the girls train harder. But now, the tables had turned. They now used Lu Xiaoyu to teach the boys how to fight. The boys in training were even somewhat annoyed. This batch of girls were just too full of vigor. No one had thought that this group of girls would completely change from their former weak selves. Not only were they very strong, they also particularly liked using unusual tactics during actual combat. Lu Xiaoyu had always rejected strangers. This was because she had naturally developed a sense of self-protection growing up. But after she had sensed others' good intentions, she would slowly lower her defenses and not be as hostile as before. When she first met Li Xiani, she had verbally attacked him and made him feel very uncomfortable. But as time passed, she was no longer as rude to Li Xiani. This was somewhat similar to her current situation. Although the relationship between Lu Xiaoyu and her classmates was unlike that of her relationship with Li Xiani, Lu Xiaoyu was certainly less offensive to others. The girls had fewer complaints about Lu Xiaoyu. Recently, the actual combats had been stopped and were replaced by training on military strategies. This was why the distress points that she had earned, even from the boys, had dropped by a significant amount. Unknowingly, Lu Xiaoyu had indeed convinced the public. 
she felt that the next time she saw Li Xiao, she would get Li Xiao to ask Mia Tang whether she could apply for the position of Heavenly King. Lu Xu felt that this time, Lu Xiaoyu had enjoyed herself to the fullest. Lu Xu put down his phone and continued singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. He sat cross-legged in his room. The tens of thousands of stars in the Milky Way appeared in the Luo City sky. If one could see it, it was much more beautiful than the aurora lights. Before dawn, Lu Xu once again drew the Cheng'ing sword from the Seal of Lands and headed to the backyard. Training was like a tall mountain. One had to put in their all before they could reach the peak and enjoy the scenery. Ordinary people felt that Lu Xu was simply a lucky person who was able to undergo awakenings. But in reality, Lu Xu had never doubted that one day, he would eventually succeed, because his 17 years of living made him understand one thing. You had to work much harder than others if you wanted to live a luxurious lifestyle. Li Xiani had commented that when he was Lu Xu's age, he would still slack off. Li Xiao had also been chased out by his master because he was too fond of playing around. But from the beginning, Li Xiao should have given up seeking a life of pleasure. Lu Xu slowly practiced swing by swing. He was at full concentration. Hai Gongzi emerged from the Cheng Ying sword and silently looked at Lu Xu. He was somewhat touched. Out of all those who had owned the Cheng Ying sword, Lu Xu was probably the most diligent and bold of them all. But as he silently praised Lu Xu, Hai Gongzi closed off his thoughts and said coldly, Indeed, you should practice your sword this early every day. Your diligence can make up for your clumsiness. Hai Gongzi was silently criticizing that Lu Xu was far too clumsy. Lu Xu could not hear anything anyway. He did not have to be afraid of how Lu Xu would react. Suddenly, Lu Xu retrieved a handful of green beans from the Seal of Lands and threw it on the ground. The green beans were randomly scattered across the ground in close proximity. Ah! 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 Hai Gongzi was going crazy. Why do you have to do such a thing? From Ao Hai's distress, plus 999. As Hai Gongzi was speaking, he squatted on the ground and picked up the green beans. Hai Gongzi did not think that Lu Xu would prepare green beans in advance. He did not want to see these green beans, but he could not take it anymore. The atmosphere in the backyard became strange. Lu Xu was slowly practicing his sword while bearing Hai Gongzi's long-winded taunts, while Hai Gongzi was squatting and picking up green beans as he continually attacked Lu Xu with his words. Lu Xu silently laughed. Come, let's harm each other. How much longer could Lu Xu bear being taunted by Hai Gongzi? If he did not defeat Hai Gongzi, he would have to bear his taunts every day. A day or two was fine, but if there was someone belittling him while he was practicing all 365 days of the year, Lu Xu felt that there had to be some rational solution to this problem. Between him and Hai Gongzi, one of them had to surrender. Chapter 577, The Owner of the Cheng Ying Sword I have never seen an owner of the Cheng Ying Sword who is as shameless as you, said Hai Gongzi as he picked up the green beans while gritting his teeth. Ha! <laughs> ha! Lu Xu said as he slowly practiced his sword. You still haven't paid me back for my ancestral chair that you broke yesterday. I have never seen such a shameless Cheng Ying Sword spirit. Their taunts had escalated in scale. When the sun rose, Lu Xu kept his sword. Hai Gongzi, who had finished picking up the green beans, returned to the Cheng Ying sword. For some reason, the two of them had formed a secret agreement, their fight would cease when Lu Xu stopped his practice. It would continue again during the next day's practice. The next day before dawn, Lu Xu sang Twinkle Twinkle Little Star until 3 a.m. to conserve his strength. Afterwards, he drew the Cheng Ying sword from the Seal of Lands and headed to the backyard. He had a respectful expression on his face. It was as if he was rushing to a battle. When he stepped into the backyard, Hai Gongzi had not come out of the Cheng Ying sword. Lu Xu threw a handful of green beans on the ground and quietly waited for Hai Gongzi's arrival. From Ao Hai's distress, plus 999. 
The moment Hai Gongzi appeared, he saw the ground full of green beans. His chest intensely rose and fell, as if he would explode at any moment. Hai Gongzi did his best to ignore the green beans on the floor, but he could not take it anymore. Lu Xu slowly walked to the center of the backyard. On his way, he even stepped on some of the green beans. From Ao Hai's distress, plus 999. Lu Xu smiled and started to practice. Ha! <laughs> ha! This treatment is used specifically to cure OCD. There was no use suppressing it. But at that moment, Lu Xu suddenly felt huge waves of energy coming from Hai Gongzi. He was shocked and looked at Hai Gongzi. The purple lotus in between Hai Gongzi's eyebrows suddenly emitted a very bright ray of light. Ka! It was as if some sort of chains had been broken, just like opening a door. The purple lotus quickly dimmed. Suddenly, a white five-to-lone panlong one appeared indistinctly behind Hai Gongzi. The panlong cruised in the space behind Hai Gongzi. It was very dignified and its scales were substantial. Lu Xu had an unpleasant premonition. He turned around and escaped. He followed the highway and ran towards Beimang Mountain, where there was no one. But he realized that there was no use in him running. Hai Gongzi had reached his peak speed. He caught up with Lu Xu even before Lu Xu could run a hundred meters. Wait, I have something to say. Lu Xu roared. But Hai Gongzi had no intention of letting Lu Xu speak. Suddenly, Lu Xu felt that the air pressure around him dropped. He could not move. The next moment, the countless families in the housing estate were jolted awake by a bright light. All they heard was a young boy's miserable cry, Ao Hai, wait. It's all Nia Ting's fault. The next morning, winter vacation had arrived. Lu Xu lay on his bed, badly battered. Saying something like Ao Hai momentarily breaking his chains is still no match for me would probably increase his self-esteem. But Lu Xu felt that there was no need to do so. Hai Gongzi was a very unique sword spirit. Lu Xu did not think that his real form was that of a panlong. Didn't this kind of mythological animal appear only in legends and fables? To speak the truth, even after being attacked, Lu Xu was still not sure exactly how strong Hai Gongzi was. At least Li Xianyi's waves of energy was no match for Hai Gongzi's sudden short burst of strength. How should he retaliate? Using his blood to draw Hai Gongzi out did not seem like a good idea anymore. It was possible for Hai Gongzi to not return to the Cheng Ying sword at all. Even if he was in the outside world, he could use the magical energy from his surroundings to sustain himself. Lu Xu got up and walked to the large supermarket next door. He bought 50 kilograms of green beans. The cashier could not help but look at Lu Xu's face. He returned home and took a deep breath. He then took out the black pearl from the seal of lands and activated it. The next moment, Lu Xu appeared in the chaos abyss. He saw Ming Yuaya struggling to reach the roast chicken within the boundaries of his chains. Ming Yuaya did not think that Lu Xu would suddenly appear. He slowly walked back to his original position and sat down. Even if I don't eat, I can still live for 10,000 years. From Ming Yuaya's distress, plus 999. But Lu Xu did not care about him. He threw the 50 kilograms of green beans on the floor. Immediately after, he drew the Cheng Ying sword with determination and pierced his own finger. Ming Yuaya was dumbfounded. What was he doing? Coming here to spill green beans, and then injuring himself? Afterwards, he saw a white figure emerge from the Cheng Ying sword. The white figure did not dare to do anything else. He squatted down and started picking up the green beans on the floor. Hai Gongzi said coldly, wait until I recover. I'll beat you up. The ground full of green beans seemed to have made Hai Gongzi, who had severe OCD, terribly upset. He was about to fall apart. The badly battered Lu Xu laughed buoyantly. Pick the beans up first. Once he finished speaking, Lu Xu once again activated the black pearl and returned to his room. 
In the past, he could only see the thick black fog and the black pearl. Now that the thick black fog had been cleared up by the chaos snakes, he could now see everything within the pearl. He saw Hai Gongzi and Ming Yuaya, both dumbfounded, in the chaos abyss. Hai Gongzi did not think that Lu Xu would bring him to an unknown place, spill 50 kilograms of green beans and disappear. Ming Yuaya was even more in shock. After Lu Xu had come in, he had summoned someone from his sword to pick up green beans, why did he have to pick up green beans? The atmosphere in the chaos abyss was just too strange. From Ming Yuaya's distress, plus 999. From Ao Hai's distress, plus 999. Ming Yuaya hesitated for a long time before suddenly asking, Who are you? Hai Gongzi replied in a dignified tone as he picked up the green beans, My name is Hai Gongzi. Ming Yuaya was dumbfounded. Didn't Lu Xu mention Hai Gongzi, the East Lord of Heaven, previously? He even said something like, You don't even know Hai Gongzi? Then we no longer have anything to talk about. Of course, he did not think that this Hai Gongzi was the East Lord of Heaven. Evidently, Lu Xu did not tell him the truth. But Ming Yuaya could not understand one thing. What was so dignified about you, squatting on the ground and picking up green beans? Ming Yuaya thought about it and said, Then, could I trouble you to pass me that plate of chicken? Hai Gongzi looked at the plate of roast chicken that Lu Xu had placed on the ground. He walked over with vigorous strides and arranged the roast chicken neatly. Afterwards, he continued picking up the green beans, as if he had no intention of passing the plate of roast chicken to Ming Yuaya. Ming Yuaya was speechless. From Ming Yuaya's distress, plus 666. What? How bad is your OCD? Were you sent here to make me suffer? Chapter 578 Elder Cousin Has Come to Pay a Visit As the end of the year approached, Lu Xu had no intention of fetching Hai Gongzi from the Chaos Abyss. Hai Gongzi was suffering. It was not because he had been trapped in the Chaos Abyss, it did not affect him much. It was because he had no container to store the green beans. After all, he was just a soul. At first, he had wanted to use his white robe to hold the green beans. But as he packed the green beans into the robe, he realized that he had underestimated Lu Xu. Fifty kilograms of green beans were not heavy to him, but it was a significant volume. His clothes could not hold so many green beans. It was as if Ming Yuaya was watching a movie. In any case, he was trapped here. It was very interesting just having someone pick up green beans in front of him. But Ming Yuaya soon stopped smiling. He suddenly realized that Hai Gongzi occasionally looked at his pants. My pants have holes in them. Even if you use them to store the green beans, the green beans will spill. Hai Gongzi nodded in agreement. It is rare to see someone as downtrodden as you are. Can you phrase your words in a better way? Ming Yuaya was somewhat unhappy. He could only helplessly look at the rotting roast chicken, but could not eat in. And here Hai Gongzi was, humiliating him? He said calmly, you're not much better off yourself. How did you get taken into custody here? Back then, it took a lot of effort for those people to lock me up here. How about you? Getting trapped here with just a few kilograms of green beans? You can't get out of here even if you wanted to. Hai Gongzi glanced at Ming Yuaya. It's not a few kilograms. It's fifty kilograms. Is there a difference? I like whole numbers. Can't a normal person come here? From Ming Yuaya's distress, plus six hundred and sixty-six. Lu Xu put on a mask and sunglasses to buy some New Year goods. He then took a stroll along the streets. The traffic was heavy. Red New Year goods were on full display on the streets of Luo City by the vendors. It felt like the New Year when New Year goods were displayed along the streets. You would come across reports of people conveying greetings to the farmers, workers, and even those waiting for the train home. Occasionally, there were also reports of children throwing firecrackers into manhole covers. 
When Lu Xu came across news like this, he would rejoice. When he was younger, he would also bring Lu Xiaoyu to throw firecrackers into the inspection shafts. There was once a very fierce child in the orphanage. Their teacher would give everyone five dollars each to buy firecrackers. In the end, that child would buy one big box and intentionally find inspection shafts. He enjoyed shoving firecrackers into the two holes in the manhole cover. Halfway through, he found a manhole without a cover. This would not do. The child would not accept this. Even if there was no cover, he threw a firecracker down. Immediately after, a repairman underground started cursing. Which bloody child threw a firecracker down without seeing if anyone was underground? As Lu Xu recalled his childhood memories, he came to a villa. He knocked on the door. A middle-aged lady with an apron opened the door. You are? I am Lu Li's classmate, Lu Xu laughed. Lu Li is probably at military training. I am here to pay a New Year visit and deliver some New Year goods. The lady was shocked. She turned around and shouted. Master, Lu Li's classmate is here. Come and say hello to him. When Lu Jiangwo came over and saw Lu Xu, he became uncomfortable. How could he not recognize Lu Xu? He did not think that Lu Xu would come to visit them. What are you here for? Lu Jiangwo said in astonishment. He definitely did not carry good intentions. But Lu Xu said very earnestly, Hello, uncle. I am Lu Xiu's comrade. Lu Xiu's sacrificial deed has affected me very strongly. I have told Lu Li that I would become his elder cousin. In the future, if you encounter any problems, please contact me. My number is 158. From Lu Jiangwo's distress, plus 199. Lu Xu's words made Lu Jiangwo shocked. It was like Lu Xu had become a member of his family, but Lu Li had never talked about this. That night, Lu Jiangwo called Lu Li. During the military period, the students could make and receive calls between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. The military camp was not completely shut off from the rest of civilization. Lu Jiangwo asked, Son, are you tired from your training? Lu Li said calmly, Nope. It is very fulfilling. I feel that this military training has allowed me to become stronger and to correct my mindset. Ha! Ha! That's good. What Lu Jiangwo wanted most was to see his son quickly grow up. It seems like the Heavenly Network's military training was not bad. He asked, Lu Xu said that he had become your elder cousin. He had even come over to pay a New Year visit and deliver New Year goods. Do you know about this? Lu Li was speechless. From Lu Li's distress, plus 666. After Lu Xu settled this affair, he started to pack his belongings. He did not buy any New Year goods for his own house. He stuffed two sets of clothes in the seal of lands and headed out. Luhai Lane Courtyard House, the capital. Sure Xue Jin was in the kitchen frying beef meatballs. Nye Ting sat in the courtyard, looking through documents. In front of him was a plate of fried beef meatballs. They were very crispy and fragrant while hot. The students at the military training this time can't go home. Do you want to convey our greetings to them? Shi Xue Jin shouted from the kitchen. Nye Ting coldly said, What for? There's no need to do so. The warriors overseas have no way to even celebrate the new year. No one wishes them happy new year. They are the ones whom we should convey our greetings to. That's different, Sir Xue Jin stopped talking. The door of the courtyard was suddenly kicked opened. The wind blew dust into the courtyard. Lu Xu appeared at the door, badly battered. Lu Xu did not care about the astonished expression. He strut over to Nye Ting and sat in front of him. He took the plate of fried beef meatballs and started to eat with gusto. From Nye Ting's distress, plus 666. From Shi Xue Jin's distress, plus 666. I want a bowl of millet gruel. 
My throat feels dry, Lu Xu beckoned to Shi Xue Jin. Sure. Nia Ting coldly looked at Lu Xu. You really don't see yourself as an outsider, do you? Where do I stay? Where I had recovered last time? Lu Xu asked, I'll tell you something. That Hai Gongzi can't fulfill his role for now. As for me, I'll spend the new year with you too. I'll leave once the wounds on my face have healed. Nia Ting was silent. Nia Ting and Shi Xue Jin had realized that Lu Xu intended to leech on them for food over the new year. Lu Xu had quickly finished eating the plate of beef meatballs. He used one of Nia Ting's documents to wipe his oily hands. Where is my millet gruel? Why is it taking so long? From Shi Xue Jin's distress, plus 666. From Nia Ting's distress, plus 666. Chapter 579, Lunar New Year Two days before the Lunar New Year, Lu Xu came to Lu Hai Lane in the capital. Afterwards, he stayed there and did not leave. Lu Xu felt that since Lu Xiaoyu was at military training, there was no way to celebrate the New Year. He had been tricked by Nia Ting as well. He could not enjoy his New Year, and he was not letting Nia Ting enjoy his either. Yes, Lu Xu felt that he was badly battered because of Nia Ting. Nia Ting knew how high Gongzi was, yet all he told Lu Xu was to be patient. He did not say that Hai Gongzi was a five to loan Pan Long one. Nia Ting suddenly thought of something. What did you say happened to Hai Gongzi? Ha! Ha! Of course Lu Xu could not say that he imprisoned Hai Gongzi in the Chaos Abyss. He could only laugh, rest assured, he is not dead. But he won't be out for a while. Shi Xue Jin gasped in shock. His father had used the sword before, thus he knew how Hai Gongzi was like. Seeing how Lu Xu had come over to say this, he had probably imprisoned Hai Gongzi somewhere, right? Since when did Lu Xu have this kind of impressive skill? Yu, Shi Xue Jin hesitated for a long time but eventually decided to ask. Lu Xu's expression changed. What about the millet gruel? Isn't it cooking? Shi Xue Jin was speechless. Oh, it's ready. Shi Xue Jin and Ye Ting looked at each other. They had a rough idea of what had happened. They were very certain that Hai Gongzi could not attack his owner. There would be a very long self-cultivation period after attacking one's owner. It did more harm than good. This was not the first time they had seen something like this. But Hai Gongzi was familiar with Shi Xue Jin's father. He had spoken to Shi Xue Jin's father about this before. Back then, Hai Gongzi said that he would not use this unless he was extremely desperate. But from the look of things, Nia Ting and Shi Xue Jin were dumbfounded. What did Lu Xu do? How did he drive Hai Gongzi to such an extreme in just a few days? After a while, Shi Xue Jin came back with a bowl of millet gruel. Where did you send Hai Gongzi to? Lu Xu did not answer his question. Can you bring over a plate of salted vegetables? Do you have salted vegetables? Shi Xue Jin was speechless. From Shi Xue Jin's distress, plus 666. He and Ye Ting had seen through everything. Lu Xu was just in a bad mood and wanted to make things difficult for them. Shi Xue Jin looked at Ye Ting. Didn't I say we should give him an enrollment letter and let him go to school? What do we do now? Ye Ting glanced at Shi Xue Jin. Didn't you ask me to give the Cheng Ying sword to him? I am not bearing the responsibility. Lu Xu looked at Nye Ting before looking at Shi Xue Jin. What are you two doing, looking at each other like that? If others knew that he could speak to two heavenly kings just like that, they would likely piss their pants. But Lu Xu did not care. He was in control of these two people, he knew they were definitely feeling guilty. He was certainly in a bad mood. The two of them had come over just before the new year. That night, Shi Xue Jin got Lu Xu to sleep in the room where he had recuperated back then. Shi Xue Jin could finally heave a sigh of relief. 
Lu Xu had kicked up a row the entire afternoon. Nye Ting fell into a deep sleep in a matter of minutes. They were thinking of how to fight back every single second. All of them had returned to their own rooms to sleep. But before dawn, Chir Xuejin heard a noise coming from outside. Bang. Crackle. Bang. Crackle. Someone was playing with firecrackers. Sure Xuejin and Ye Ting were jolted awake from their sleep. They were dumbfounded. Weren't fireworks banned in the capital a long time ago? Who was so daring to do so? And it seemed like the origin of the sound was close by. Wait. There was someone playing with firecrackers in the courtyard. Lu Xu. From Ye Ting's distress, plus 999. From Shi Xuejin's distress, plus 999. You bastard with no morals. Why are you playing with fireworks in the courtyard at night? Shi Xuejin tucked in his clothes and went out. He saw Lu Xu and angrily said, What are you doing? Didn't you know that firecrackers are banned in the capital? Lu Xu was unhappy as well. Then it won't feel like it's the new year. Shi Xuejin felt that something was not right. He looked at his watch. 3 a.m. No one plays with firecrackers at 3 a.m. People usually set them off at 12, midnight. Only you would play with them at 3 a.m. What, does your family only stay up until 3 a.m. on New Year's Eve? Don't you wait until the sky lights up? From Shi Xuejin's distress, plus 999. No worries, I will stay up until morning. I have bought a lot of firecrackers, Lu Xu laughed. Shi Xuejin thought about it. Something else was not right. It's two days before the new year. It's too early to play with firecrackers. If one set off firecrackers in the restricted areas during the new year, they would be fined. But Lu Xu did not believe that anyone would dare to ask Nye Ting to pay a fine. Shi Xuejin looked on helplessly as he saw Lu Xu take out a box of firecrackers from the Seal of Lands. Just now, he had been playing with firecrackers. Now, he had changed to fireworks. Shi Xuejin looked at the label on the box of firecrackers, a hundred thousand firecrackers. Shi Xuejin went back into the house and made a call. Hello, police? Can you come over? There is someone playing with firecrackers. Yes, yes, yes. Hurry up and find this person. The address is 17, Luhai Lane. Yes, 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 it's Heavenly King Ye's house. No worries, Heavenly King Ye will support you. The leader of the Heavenly Network was forced to make a police report. Seeing this, Lu Xu kept his firecrackers. Shi Xuejin laughed loudly. Little guy, are you still scared? He did not actually call the police. It would not be good if this blew up. Shi Xuejin only wanted to scare Lu Xu. Before Shi Xuejin could even finish laughing, Lu Xu sat by the stone table and looked up. He opened his mouth and said, Bang. Crackle. Bang. Crackle. Shi Xuejin was speechless. Were you a human firecracker? Were you performing vocal mimicry? What were you doing? Have you gone mad? Shi Xuejin was an ordinary person. He could not take these consecutive sleepless nights. From Shi Xuejin's distress, plus 999. The next morning, Shi Xuejin had heavy dark eye circles. He looked at Nye Ting. Hurry up and enroll him into school. Let him go. Nye Ting shook his head. I'm afraid just an admission letter would not be able to solve the problem now. The night before the new year, Shi Xuejin was prepared to call the police if Lu Xu played with firecrackers again. But Lu Xu was nowhere to be found. Where did Lu Xu go? Shi Xuejin asked curiously. The Baishan Cemetery, Nye Ting said calmly. This is probably his main aim coming to the capital. Lu Xu stood before Lu Xiu's grave. 
He gently placed a bowl of Zhajiang Mian too in front of the grave. My friend, you must be lonely spending the new year here. I have brought a bowl of Zhajiang Mian. Thank you for bravely stepping forward then. If it were not for you, I may have been the one in this grave, not you. Lu Xu sat by the stairway and chattered on. I have visited your younger cousin's family. After you were gone, I told your younger cousin that I would be his elder cousin from then on. But it doesn't seem like he is grateful. Brother, if you have no more worries, hurry up and be reincarnated. If we really become comrades in our next life, we can see our flourishing country and eat Jiang Mian together. Give me a wink when that time comes. If not, I am afraid that I will not recognize you. Chapter 580 Special Permission to Go to School Lu Xu had two aims coming to the capital. The first was to pay his respects to Lu Xiu and spend his first new year after his death with him. The second was to annoy Nye Ting and Shi Xue Jin. When Shi Xue Jin heard Nye Ting say that Lu Xu had gone to the Babaishan Cemetery, he could not help but be silent. He said to Nye Ting, he has a good heart. Perhaps you have made a good decision. If Lu Xu became the person in charge of overseas affairs, we may be able to reduce the number of comrades sacrificed overseas. If it were someone heartless, they would probably only care about their own life or about completing their tasks. They would not care about the lives of others. Nia Ting nodded his head. These kinds of people are only suitable to be assassins, not leaders. Shi Xue Jin looked at Nia Ting. You are talking about Chao Qingxi, right? Then why did you still prepare to pass down sword techniques to her? She is not heartless. It's just that she will do anything to fulfill her mission, be it by fair means or foul. She is even willing to sacrifice herself, let alone the lives of others, said Nia Ting calmly. Thus, the job she is most suited to do is not overseas relations. She is suitable to be the sharpest sword in the heavenly network. Then how about the other geniuses? Shi Xue Jin curiously said, this time, we have sacrificed two class aptitude geniuses. Until now, I still feel sorry for them. But others have changed very quickly. Some people had undergone an awakening when faced with life or death. Now, even the veteran experts in the heavenly network may be no match for them. This world is really unfair. These geniuses can quickly narrow the gap between them and those who have spent a lot of time training. We both know that there is no true equality in this world. If not, how is it possible that you don't even possess the natural endowments for training? Nia Ting flipped the documents in his hands. As for the two who were sacrificed, we had provided them with sufficient plans to protect themselves. But they did not listen when we allowed them to retreat and insisted on having their own way. Compared to these geniuses, I'd rather have Lu Xu. But if he is not willing to do so, what can you do? Shi Xue Jin shook his head. Is there really no one else to choose from? I feel that after some time, Lu Xu may not be able to defeat some of these geniuses. I don't think so. Don't you think that Lu Xu has too many secrets? Nia Ting looked up and said calmly, at the key moment between life and death, those who are modest about their abilities are often the ones who win. Till now, we do not know exactly how Lu Xu killed Takashima Tairatsu. We do not know how much he had learned in the Hall of Swords either. We only know that he has probably reached Class B, but no one knows exactly how strong he is. The dog that bites does not bark. This metaphor may not be very suitable, but Lu Xu is certainly suitable to play a role, where he only unleashes his true potential during the most crucial moment. Let the geniuses return to their own units. Before the military training ends, tell the ordinary students in the Daoyuan class to not let their guard down. Tell them that in the wider world, there are people more talented than they are. Some become complacent after the training ends. Shi Xue Jin said, but don't give them too much pressure. Things are easily broken if they are put under too much pressure. Okay, Nia Ting nodded his head. Then what do we do about Lu Xu? Do we just leave him in the Luo City security formation? 
Sure Shua Jean smacked his lips in annoyance. Or do we let him go to school and satisfy his desire? Back then, you intentionally stopped him from going to school. That's why we're in this situation now. I feel that he does not necessarily have to go to school, but since you did not let him go, he insists on going. And you have to make this decision before he can finally accept it. Nya Ting's tone became cold. Are you making me admit defeat? He doesn't need to go to school. He can be by himself overseas. Why does he have to go to school and waste time there? Hai Gongzi has been locked up in who knows where. There's no big deal about admitting defeat, haven't I said it before? This had happened precisely because you intentionally did not let him go to school. What he wants the most now is a personal admission letter from you. Weren't you the one who insisted on giving the Chong Ying sword to him? Nia Ting's expression was dark. I can't bear the full responsibility either. Look at him. He came all the way to the capital to spend the new year with Lu Xiao. There's nothing wrong with giving him the Chung Ying sword, right? Sure Xue Jin felt slightly awkward. Nia Ting was also very aware of what Lu Xu was thinking. He thought about it and said, let's wait until he comes back in the day. Nia Ting felt that Lu Xu had done this for the sake of Lu Xiao. Lu Xu's intentional trip here to pay his respects to Lu Xiao made Nia Ting very touched. But Nia Ting's conviction to send Lu Xu overseas had only been strengthened. But it seemed like Lu Xu would not accept this offer now. Nia Ting had to think of another way. The next day, Lu Xu still had not returned. No one knew where he had gone. Nia Ting knew that Lu Xu had a mask. It was not difficult for him if he really wanted to disappear within the capital. But Nia Ting had an unpleasant premonition. What if he caused another big problem within the capital? Thus, Nia Ting sat in the control room at Lingjing Lane. The surveillance screens showed every single nook and cranny of the capital. But after an entire day, there was nothing. What was happening? Nia Ting furrowed his eyebrows and returned to Luhai Lane. He was still waiting to have a chat with Lu Xu. Nia Ting was thinking. Lu Xu had said that he could not bear the thousands upon thousands of Lu Xiu's lives overseas and thus was not willing to go overseas. Nia Ting could have a serious conversation with Lu Xu and convince him that going overseas would allow him to save even more Lu Xiu's. Or he could say that if Lu Xu's abilities were strong enough, he could ensure that those Lu Xiu's lives would be safe. This seemed to be a good point of entry. But when Nia Ting had finally decided to have a good chat with Lu Xu, Lu Xu disappeared. On the first day of the new year, Nia Ting and Shi Xue Jin did not have to visit their relatives. They went back to their own rooms to rest. Before dawn, Nia Ting suddenly opened his eyes. He heard the sound of people moving things outside. It seemed as if someone had moved a chair to their door. Bang. Crackle. Bang bang. Crackle crackle crackle. From Nia Ting's distress, plus 999. From Sher Xue Jin's distress, plus 999. Sher Xue Jin tucked in his clothes in annoyance and opened the door. He saw Lu Xu sitting at the door, making firecracker noises with his mouth. Sure Xue Jin was dumbfounded. You disappeared for a day, but you still remember to come back at night to make this kind of noise? Nia Ting, with a dark expression on his face, threw a piece of paper at Lu Xu. The paper gave Lu Xu special permission to go to school. Nia Ting said, take this. Hurry up and give this to Zhang Yutong. Remember to treat Hai Gongzi well. According to legend, Hai Gongzi was not sealed in the Cheng Ying sword by someone else. Rather, he had sacrificed himself to save others. After his death, he forced his soul to stay behind and used the Cheng Ying sword to rear ghosts. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. So Hai Gongzi had a history like that? When he looked into the black pearl that day, he still saw Hai Gongzi picking up green beans.
What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the hill 